Hello and welcome to Vegan Myths. I'm Kevin Barry and I help ex-vegans recover their health, strength, energy, and mental clarity. I spent years experimenting on myself and reading countless books and studies to achieve the phenomenal health that I have now with a 100% natural and affordable diet and without the use of toxic, costly, synthetic drugs. Today, we'll be debunking the famous vegan myth that the human body is not designed for meat consumption. Human physiology clearly refutes this lie. The truth is, the digestive system systems of carnivores and herbivores are very different. Carnivores and omnivores typically have one stomach chamber and a simple digestive system. Herbivores, however, often have several larger stomach chambers and a much longer digestive tract. For example, a lion's digestive tract is four times its body length. A human's digestive tract is five to six times its body length. And a cow's digestive tract is a whopping 17 times its body length. And a rabbit's digestive tract is 16 times its body length. Ruminant animals also regurgitate food, rechew, and re-swallow to help with digestion. They do this up to three times or more. These long tracts and huge stomachs also act as giant fermentation vats for breaking down plant foods and cellulose. Human and carnivore stomachs ferment too, but in comparison to herbivores, it's trivial. Ultimately, herbivores do the hard work of processing the energy that comes from plant life, making these nutrients much easier to digest for omni and carnivores. Ever heard you are what you eat? When you look at your flesh, you're looking mostly at saturated fat and cholesterol. This is what makes up the majority of your cells. That's why it's important to eat animal foods that contain saturated fats and cholesterol. It replenishes your cellular makeup and quite literally regenerates you, as opposed to long-term vegans who clearly deteriorate and suffer severe emaciation on their zero animal product diet. Also, the human stomach low pH levels, along with its production of hydrochloric acid, is unique to meat eaters in the animal kingdom. Hydrochloric acid also activates protein splitting enzymes. This is not something found in herbivores. Then there is the human pancreas, which produces a full range of digestive enzymes for handling both animal and vegetable foods. There's also the human teeth, which are a fascinating mix between that of a carnivore's and an herbivore's teeth. If we first compare ourselves to the dog on the left, we see that we have canines, which mirror carnivore teeth, that are perfect for tearing through meat. But when compared to the herbivore on the right, the horse, we also see that we have back molars that are similar to the teeth that herbivores have. The molars are especially important for chewing and grinding up food, especially plant foods. Being that plant cellulose and carbohydrates are much more difficult for the body to digest as opposed to foods like meat. The reef the reflex of chewing signals your body to release saliva, which helps break down carbohydrates via the enzyme tyolene. Tyolene. I have no idea how to pronounce that. Please let me know if you know in the comments. The ultimate goal is to deliver the food to the stomach in a liquid state for efficient digestion and absorption of nutrients. I recommend chewing each bite of food 25 to 50 times before swallowing, especially when eating foods high in carbohydrates. Our very physiology demonstrates we are mixed feeders with a leaning towards meat consumption. Looking at plant physiology, we see that anti-nutrients largely make up the profiles of many plant foods, especially beans, grains, legumes, seeds, and nuts. Antinutrients are natural or synthetic compounds that interfere with the absorption of vitamins, minerals, and other nutrients. The reason many plant foods have these antinutrients is because they act as a natural defense mechanism. Plants can't run away from predators, but they are amazing chemists. These antinutrients help them repel pests, bugs, and other predators so the seeds are able to live on and reproduce. However, these antinutrients do not deter herbivores because their digestive tract is designed to consume them. These are the top five worst antinutrients to look out for. But despite this, vegan influencers like Joey Carbstrong will say things like this when trying to convert others. Body. We need calcium, we, we need iron, oh, yeah. we need, uh, and this cannot be provided by the net, by the plants. Uh, where does the animal get the calcium and the iron from in their body? If people only knew the basics of biology and weren't so disconnected from nature, arguments like this would never survive. If you saw my video on vitamin A, you would already know that vitamins are not the same between animal and plant sources. Let's see an example of this and how the different digestive systems throughout the animal kingdom plays a role in it all. Let's look at vitamin K. Vegan experts say you can get vitamin K from leafy greens, but this is a lie. Vitamin K1 is what is found in leafy greens, but it's vitamin K2, which is really instrumental to your health, that is found only in animal foods such as pasture-raised meat, dairy, and eggs. Vitamin K2 is created from an herbivore eating leafy greens so that its digestive system can synthesize it from vitamin K1 
one and two vitamin K2 into its flesh. What grass is to the cow, a steak is to us. That is how different our digestive systems are. And a conversion process of grass straight to human like this to get vitamin K2 is biologically impossible for a human. And just so you know, vitamin K2 benefits include reduced risk of calcification of arteries, atherosclerosis, osteoporosis, heart disease, cavities, tooth decay, kidney problems, and hormonal imbalances. Overall, vitamin K2 greatly improves bone health and cardiovascular health. These benefits are because vitamin K2's main function is playing an essential role in maximum utilization of bodybuilding minerals and tissue components, such as vitamin K2's ability to deliver calcium where it needs to go in the body, being your bones, and stopping calcium from building up where it shouldn't calcify being your arteries. On top of K2, other vitamins and nutrients that you either cannot get your RDA from with only plants or cannot metabolize properly without animal foods also being consumed or that you simply cannot find in plant foods are vitamins A, B6, B12, DNF, amino acids, creatine, carnitine, carnosine, and taurine, as well as heme iron, cholesterol, and conjugated linoleic acid. Many vegans will ignore evidence like this and continue to suffer malnourishment, emaciation, and deteriorating mental health. This is because the vegan mind is hijacked by a fake morality and a fake worldview, so they never think to even research the basics of biology or how nature works. Vegans are always from the city and never live in tune with nature themselves you will not find vegans living in the countryside. This is because veganism itself is a $13 billion industry. Special interests like Bill Gates and the UN, who are admitted depopulation advocates, are constantly investing upwards of billions in propaganda and attempts to influence the culture to be vegan. Regenerative farmers and people who actually live in nature are immune to being fooled by these unnatural agendas because they live and breathe every day in nature and have the most intimate connection with the animals and land around them as humanly possible. If you'd like to learn more about the natural life that regenerative farmers live, then I strongly encourage you to watch the film The Biggest Little Farm. Link to the trailer in the description below. Veganism is simply a man-made diet that we will never find on the countryside or in our ancestral history. Veganism is ignorant to our ancestors' way of life. We're all here today because our ancestors grew healthy and strong by primarily eating wild and pasture-raised meat. This is especially evident when you realize our ancestors, depending on the climate they lived in, only had animals as their year-round option for food. Despite this, veganism teaches it's a more natural diet, even though the fake artificial fruits and veggies of today didn't even exist mere centuries ago. As much as I'd like to feel bad for Joey, I certainly can't when I see he's making money off brainwashing children. Sadly, Joey's far from the only one brainwashing these children. These little ones will have many hard times ahead in their lives because of the vegan starvation diet that was forced onto them. Don't be like Joey Methface. Nature is wiser than anything man teaches. Concerns about malnutrition in vegetarians and vegans will always exist, but there is one single great thing you can do to heal and get started on recovering your health today. You can make friends with your local farmer to get a great deal on foods like pasture-raised meat, eggs, and dairy, as well as organic, non-GMO fruit and veg. Find a farmer in your area using regenerationinternational.org and find a regenerative farm near you. If you're an ex-vegan looking to recover your health, energy, and mental clarity, check the links below for help and resources. Thanks for watching. Feel free to subscribe or watch the next video.